please just tell me how to write. You know, just please tell me what I did. Here's a formula. You do this, you do that. How does a character drive plot? It's about what they want and what they need and their conflicts and their flaws. Um, you know, it's one of the first things most actors will look at in, in the, judging a script and want to play this role is what's his character's flaw? You know, what's the problem with this character that, that they have to overcome or that drives them? Or So drama, I think, is all about what, what does the, per the character want um, and what are they willing to do to get it? What can they do to get it? What, you know, what are the stakes going to be? Uh, and then it just it just builds, hopefully, from there. You know, there's always that great debate about what's what comes first, plot or character. And I've always found in my work, uh, there's no rule. Sometimes I'll get, I'll get an idea for a plot um, that will kind of like I'll, something I'll read in the newspaper or something I'll see. And I'm like, oh, wow, wouldn't that be interesting? And then I got to figure out how to populate it with people uh, and, and, and how can I invest this person with uh, a need uh, and a flaw and an opportunity and now put them in that plot. And then there's other times where I just, I come up with a character where I just know, man, that is a funny person. I'd love to see that person. And so then it's about how to build it around, around them. So either one can come first, but ultimately it's, you know, what, what the characters want, I think. Why do you think so many writers bicker about uh, plot versus character? Well, I think it might be because we're all looking for formula. You know, we'd all love a template. Please just tell me how to write. You know, just please tell me what I did. Here's a formula. You do this, you do that. That's why I think so many of these screenwriting books are so successful because they sort of promise, you know, okay, you've got the idea. That's great. But now I'm going to show you how to apply that idea and, and make it work. And not that there aren't great. I mean, I've read them all. And um, not that there aren't great things to learn from those books. But ultimately, uh, um, you know, you just have to be careful to not rely on something outside yourself to come up with a plot you know, or a story. And a friend of mine <laughs> wants, he wanted to be a writer so badly, and he wasn't very good. And I was recommending books for him to read. And um, he read a bunch of them, and I said to him, so, you know, did it help? Was it helpful? He said, well, not really. I mean, there's a lot of stuff about, you know, how to write, but there was nothing about what to write. <laughs> so I said, man, if you don't have anything to write about, you're not in the right business. You, you've got to... <laughs> <laughs> do something else. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the real problem is you have too much to write about. There's too many right. things. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Do you ever find yourself being too precious with your characters where you don't want to give them certain flaws or that's never been an issue? It's almost the opposite. You know, I sometimes find myself um, hobbling them you know, with too many, too much darkness, too much stuff they're fighting. And, uh, you know, I'll get feedback saying, well, you know, it's hard to root for this person because they're a little too dark. You know? So often I have to kind of pull back on that sometimes and give them a little more light uh, than, than heaviness. Sure. Well, just off camera, we were talking about uh, white Irish drinkers. Mm. And that's from 2010? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, and I felt all of the characters were f had some flaws, maybe some more than others. But I, I felt that each one I could see maybe where they were coming from. I didn't see one that was, even even the one unlikable, you could say, I won't give it away, but yeah. you could see where his character might be coming from right. and, and cut him some slack. Yeah. Um, Good, and, right. and yeah, so so I, I enjoyed that because even the one that was supposedly the, the squeaky clean one, there were a few flaws, nothing too right. bad, but right. where everybody had their own things they were struggling yeah. with and it was a beautiful job. I, well, thank you. Yeah. I, it's great to hear that. And I think that... Um, you know, one of the most important things to keep in mind from a writing point of view and also from an acting point of view is that even like the worst villain in life doesn't think they're a villain. You know, everyone thinks what they're doing is the right thing, even if it's just for them. So, you know, people don't go, man, I'm, I'm really bad and uh, I'm going to do this now because I'm a bad person. They're, they're thinking that uh, I'm, I'm un, uh, misunderstood uh, I'm uh, I'm hated. No one likes me. Uh, I never got the breaks. I never got the chance. You know, whatever it is that leads to things. So I deserve to rob this bank. It's not I'm a bad person. I I just didn't. and so that's I think an important thing with characters. That's why it's fun for me to write villains um, because I love them. I love them and I want them to have full lives and and uh, I don't think I don't expect the audience to like them, but I want them 
to understand them and to feel and to recognize them. That's the most important thing. Yeah, I, I, I've seen that person. I know that person. You know, when, when All in the Family first premiered, which for many of your viewers will probably be <laughs> too young to remember that, but it was the first time on television there was that kind of overtly prejudiced, bigoted, working class character. And you know, the, the switchboard to CBS lit up because they'd say, hey, my dad's on TV. That's my <laughs> uncle. That's my, you know. And so there's nothing more magical, I think, than hitting that button with an audience of like, oh, he's a, he's a, there's a specific character, but there's a universal thing that I recognize and feel with that character. And it was so great to have the Rob Reiner character butt up against right. Archie Bunker and, right. and two polar opposites and both right. very, very strong in their opinions. Right. And it was right. it was excellent. Yeah. And the longer you got to know Archie Bunker, you know, because at first you hated him, like this guy's despicable. But the more you got to know him, the more you start to understand, the more they led you into his past and how he was brought up and his his experiences as a kid and the disadvantages he had and and you start to understand what formed his worldview. So even though you can't agree with it, you say, yeah, I understand how a guy like that comes to this place where he hates the people who are different. He can't understand people. He, there, he's frightened by people who are different. And that's a huge step towards making people understand each other. How do you develop a character flaw? Well, again, um, I look within. <laughs> I start inside. Um, one of the things I, I hate about myself that I would like to change um, I like to think that sometimes by writing about it, I can even maybe fix it. You know, it just hasn't happened yet. Uh, so, I mean, that's the basic thing. And I always think that anytime you pull from yourself, not in an egotistical way, but just in, a, in an honest way, um, you're halfway there in making a, a real character. And then it's just about trying to figure out how does this flaw, uh, how, it had, how it has it affected this character growing up? Uh, what's it made other people think of him? How has it made other people treat him? Uh, does this flaw become worse because of the way people have treated this character? Is it self-perpetuating? So you can kind of go off on a whole bunch of uh, you know, tangents. I try to start simply and specifically about uh, you know, the flaw that's going to help me serve this plot and, and drive it forward and make for interesting twists and turns. Uh, and it's another thing just... Not to go away from that subject, but specificity also is, I think, one of the most important things in writing. And so often it's missing. I think, you know, people, beginning writers or writers who just don't work that hard, uh, will describe things in vague ways or, or talk about emotions in general, vague ways. You know, um, I miss my wife so much. Uh, you know, she died two years ago. I miss her so much. You know, this is sort of the, the simple example, as opposed to saying, you know, when my wife came down in the morning, the first thing she did was, uh, you know, put this, put the cup upside down on the, you know, something specific that you really feel like you you can almost see and hear and smell, uh, and so that also plays into flaws and just something that's you can exhibit. Uh, you know, the character can, because character is also of course all about behavior. Uh, and especially in films, you know, in, in novels, you have the luxury of having this inner life that you can use words to describe. But in movies and TV, we're just limited by what we can see. We got to just deal with what, what people are seeing. So you really have to uh, uh, explore and illustrate behavior. Uh, I'm sorry, character through their behavior. What, what we're seeing them do, how they treat each other, um, what they do when they're alone. You know, are they different when they're alone and with, with somebody else? Um, how are they different with, with two different people? Um, you know, this is all little tricks you can use behaviorally to really set up who your character is and make them recognizable. And in your character's arcs, do they always, let's say a dark character, does it always turn themselves around or no, there's just some sort of resolve, but they're still the same? You know, I think that the best drama you know, the characters all make a journey of some kind. I don't always feel like um, you have to do the network television version of it where, you know, the, the bad guy has to see the evil of his way. You know, it's, it's not. I mean, people, um, you know, a great example of this, I think, is, uh, uh, is it Three Billboards? In, in oh, Evans right. Or, uh -huh. You know, and the character Sam Rockwell played was just a brilliant actor. You know, that's a guy who makes a fantastic arc 
And he starts off as this hateful racist. And in his relationship and dealings with Frances McDormand, he starts to come around a little bit and he ends up helping her. But by the end of the movie, you don't feel like this guy is going to go out now and go on a march. But he has regained a little bit of humanity, so you have some hope for him. And so to me, that's a perfect uh, and an expertly done uh, character arc uh, for someone like that. Where you, you know, If he suddenly became this touchy-feely, lovey guy, oh, was, you wouldn't believe it and wouldn't honor the work that was done in setting up who this guy is. So, you know, people, I don't think, sadly, you know, I think people don't tend to change very much. I think they change increments. And so you don't have to necessarily reflect that in drama because you want to give people something a little higher to you know, aspire to. But I think you have to, any, any evolution of a character has to be true ultimately to who they really are. And, and you know, how they're going to manifest that change. And in Frances McDormand's character in, in Three Billboards out of Ebbing's Montana, mm-hmm. how does she change? Well, I, you know, I certainly think that she becomes less um, angry. Uh, you know, I think that when, particularly when Sam Rockwell helps her and, and she starts to feel she's not alone, uh, I think she finds a way to deal with her pain uh, and you get the sense by the end of the movie that, okay, she's probably going to be all right. She's probably, she's going to learn how to live with this pain. It's always going to be there, but it's not going to just um, uh, keep her stalled. And I think at the beginning of the movie, she is just stalled. She can't go forward. And so she's not going to be this happy, lucky person, but you do feel like, um, you know, she has now maybe found another color in her life.